Now, for more on the teen STEM education, I'm joined by scientist and author, Dr. Anissa Ramirez. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, as we know, there are so many options advertised teaching children to code. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics says kids aged two and under shouldn't be spending any time at all in front of computer screens. How early is too early to introduce coding? Well, those doctors would know. Um, what we need children to do when they're very young is to actually learn how to play. Uh, what we're doing is we're teaching their brains so that they're able to use their imagination, that they're able to do some thinking on their own before we teach them more structured learning. Uh, the, there's an important thing like recess. Those things are very important for children to have before they get to the, the rigorous ways of, st of studying, such as robotics and, and coding and computer science. Now, looking at the efforts by the U.S. and China to invest more resources in STEM subjects in children's education, how significant do you think that could be in the long term? Well, we're in a technologically rich society, so we do need to prepare the future generation for it. Uh, but if we, we can't be too lopsided, meaning that we're doing 100% STEM, focusing all of our efforts on STEM. STEM happens in context, and so we also need to be thinking about liberal arts as well. Uh, we need to know how to code, but we need to know how to communicate. Uh, so I think that this, this push for STEM is very well-intentioned. We want to make sure that children have jobs in the future. But we also have to remember that all this technology happens in a context. And when we make decisions about a certain technology, we have to think of its impact, the consequences as well. And we can only do that if we have a balanced education of both STEM in context with liberal arts and other things as well. Now, being that we do have this push focusing on STEM, is there a concern that because only those who have access to certain types of technology will get ahead, and perhaps that might exacerbate what we're seeing with income inequality? Absolutely. I mean, we've heard about the digital divide. Uh, we're talking about there's a lot of high schools. There's about 40 percent in the United States that have coding, but those are mostly in uh, schools that are in uh, well well-funded schools. So underrepresented minorities don't have access to those things. So, um, and we're looking at STEM. Well, sorry, we're looking particularly at coding as a way to bring people out of poverty. Um, you, can ha you can develop an app and use this as an opportunity to get yourself into the middle class. But if you don't have those classes available to you, then that divide becomes broader and broader and broader. So yes, there's this, there's this need for STEM, but we need to make sure that all schools, all students have access to it. Now, there is an argument that by popularizing just one sort of type of computer skills, you'll have an entire workforce with that specialty, and that could potentially lower the average wage level for tech employees in the future. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's well-intentioned as, well, as well. You don't want to have glut. You don't want to have a large number of people with the same skill set. But I think we're, we're missing the point of what the importance of STEM is. It's not solely for workforce development. We really want to use STEM as an opportunity to exercise children's minds with imagination, creativity, critical, critical thinking. These are the skills that STEM has embedded in it. And not everyone's going to be a coder. So if we're, making if we're developing STEM courses to make computer scientists, well, I think that's not the direction that we should be taking. But if we're using STEM as a gymnasium to exercise children's minds so that they have critical thinking skills, so that they're better prepared for the second half of the 21st century, then I think that's well-intentioned. Now, a lot of the talk is more so focused on jobs. So it, it does make you wonder, how might that impact then some of these non-tech jobs and how they're valued? Well, that is definitely a problem right now because those non-technical jobs feel that they need to have some STEM in order to be, be relevant. And feels like art, they need, they need some STEM, but they don't need STEM. Art has a different purpose. So by focusing fully on STEM, we're kind of missing the point of the importance of other fields as well. Uh, so yes, I do feel like it's a little lopsided right now. Um, it's like a pendulum. We're swinging from one side and we'll swing to the other. Uh, STEM is important for job creation, but as humans, we're much, much more than cogs part of this in this larger machinery. We are humans, and we create, and we do other things as well besides STEM. So we'll, we'll, I think, again, the pendulum is swung to one side, and we'll slowly swing back to the other until we get to some kind of, some kind of balance. Thank you so much for your insights. Scientist and author Dr. Anissa Ramirez.